Today's version is a low carb version because we're using the low carb bread. So I've bought a bag of frozen cauliflower and broccoli. So I'm gonna make a mash out of that. And I'm gonna start with that because as it's frozen, I'm gonna start sort of cooking it off slowly on the front and then I'll move it to the back. I'm not gonna weigh it out. I'm gonna do about half the bag. I'm gonna try and get equal volume of cauliflower and broccoli. I'm just gonna leave that alone because I want it to soften. You know, I can't do anything with it right now. So, a bit of butter, let the heat get to it, leave it alone. Right, so the bread, frozen, I've popped it in the Ninja foodie, um, so it's really crispy now, you can hear it. So I only need about 50 grams. I've probably overdone it here a little bit. So I'm gonna use the, the crunchy outsides rather than the, the, uh, the fluffy insides. Because I've used the crispy bits, they've obviously gone into quite a nice uh, crump. Essentially, it's all ingredients going into the bowl. So I'm gonna just whack the... I didn't go for the five because there's not really any fat going into this, as in into the mix. 12% is a good meat Yeah. So, four mints going in. So again, I'm making a, a double portion here. Seasonings, we're gonna use sage. A Couple of teaspoons of dried sage. I'm also gonna be using uh, onion powder. I am gonna put some shallots in there as well. Um, but onion powder does tend to lift the flavor a little bit. Couple of teaspoons, a teaspoon per pack of meat. Dijon mustard. I mean, obviously, Dijon is to taste. You know, add your add the, the level that you would like, but you really do want, you know, a teaspoon to a couple. We will need to season it, obviously, as well. But it's also calling for some bacon. So we're going to shred some bacon. I've got four slices of, of uh, back bacon here. I'm going to I'm going to dice it actually. We're gonna have two whole eggs going in this, double portion, again. And then we're gonna give it a good old mix. You could, if you really wanted to use a food processor, it's gonna, well, I suppose if you're only doing half the portion size, then actually most food processors would be okay. You just want a pull set. If you've got a plastic blade, rather than the metal S blade, then uh, use that, because you just wanna create a, a paste of sauce. It's gonna be a lumpy paste. It won't take much mixing either. Squeezing the meat together. Obviously, breadcrumbs were at the bottom, so we're trying to combine all of those. They're gonna help sort of, um, again, with the texture, and bind everything. So, good amount of salt and pepper, obviously, to taste. It's still got that texture. I can see the bacon all the way through it. Um, I suppose you could always have, I mean, we've used uh, dry herbs in here, so, They've just sort of disappeared color-wise. If you wanted to use fresh, you'd probably see a little bit more if you've got some fresh sage. Right, okay, I've kept the lid on. It's on a medium low uh, because essentially what I want to do is soften up the, the cauliflower and the broccoli. The stalks are a little bit firm still, so they're gonna, I'm gonna move them to the back. Keep the lid on them. Yeah, I just need them to sort of cook down a little bit more, just so I can mash them up a little bit finer. So they'll be around about 50 gram meatballs. Going to use lard. I don't need much, because there's gonna be some fat coming out of this, but they do, they do want a little bit in there. And again, I want it on a medium heat, not high.
can see when you sort of cooking the meatballs, you can see where they're cooked and you know how much longer they need because you can see where they're pink. When I'm rotating them, I'm just trying to put them on the pink side. Just squeezing the moisture out of the tomato, it's just making a nice sort of bit of paste in the middle. I have got a little bit of passata I'm going to use in it as well. There's probably about 100 grams in here, there's probably about, about that much. I will be adding a little bit of water to it just to um, help create a sauce in a few minutes. I want these tomatoes to fall. I've added a little bit of water to this just so it can get all of the passata out to be honest. I'm going to cook it all down anyway. And I'm just going to coat the um, coat the meatballs. Again, if you were using a, a five percent pork, um, then the meat could be quite dry. So you definitely want a sauce. I'd be quite happy to eat the meatballs without a sauce. We will give it a little bit of spice, a little bit of uh, seasoning though. Right, turn that down. Right, we're going to bring the um, we're going to bring the mash back because I can smell it now. I'm going to move this back there for a few minutes. So actually this is just cooked down, it's now really soft. So I don't even need to be doing anything to actually mash it, it's just falling anyway. I am gonna add, I'm only gonna add a little bit. Wow, the color's just gone on the screen. I'm only gonna add a little bit. Some grated mozzarella, 10 to 15 grams. And obviously it's gone quite stringy because of the mozzarella, but it's, it's, you know, mash-like. Right, just some Italian herbs going into this. I'm trying to make sure I'm in the middle, but we're at 70 degrees now, so we're fine. Um, obviously, just pick two or three, just make sure. And they should be, obviously, they've all been in there pretty much the same amount of time. If you're, uh, if you're unsure, just pop a lid on it for a couple of minutes. Um, and then come back to it just on a, on a low heat, just so it doesn't dry out. 